Hey guys, welcome back to White Cheeto Gaming, where you can find all of your basic tips on Total War games. The Amazons have been released, so we'll be looking at unit guides for both Amazon rosters. If you are interested in this content and want to keep up to date with future guides, hit that subscribe button. Today we'll be looking at the unit roster of Penthesilea. As for both Amazon rosters, they have access to many cavalry units, but mainly her units focus on being very quick and aggressive while also lacking heavily armored units and good staying power, although they do have some of the hardest hitting axes and javelin units in the game. CA has also introduced a handful of new passive abilities that are unique to the Amazon roster, so we'll be covering those as we see them pop up. First on the Amazon roster are the Initiates. These are lightweight spear and shield infantry. They have fairly low armor, and they're shielded with a missile block chance of 40%, Decent morale, high speed, high melee attack, and melee defense for being the most basic melee infantry of the roster. Good damage of 63 with bonus versus large. This unit has a passive ability called Wary, which reduces their melee attack and morale by 10. This effect is constant, meaning they will have this at the beginning of each battle, but it can be disabled if they there are routing enemies nearby. This will be your cannon fodder unit, so use these as your front line in the early game. And then in the mid game, you can send them in before your higher tier units engage. Amazon Chargers. These are lightweight two-handed spear infantry. They have low armor, fairly low morale, high speed, 33 melee attack, and 30 melee defense. 70 damage with bonus versus large, 22 charge bonus. They have a toggle ability called Spread and Charge, which gives 30% extra charge bonus when activated, but a negative 15% melee defense. You want to use this unit for flanking the enemy front line. Activate their spread and charge ability before they clash with the flanks. Once they have done so, deactivate their ability to restore their melee defense back to normal. Warband. These are lightweight two-handed axe infantry, lightly armored, fairly low morale, high speed, 38 melee attack, low melee defense of 20, 69 damage with good armor piercing values, good charge bonus of 35. This unit has force fighter which gives them plus 4 melee attack and plus 4 melee defense when fighting in the forests. This unit should be utilized for flanking enemy frontline units. These will be your armor piercing option in the early game. Now we have our first real frontline unit, the Eldsworn. These are a medium weight spear and shield infantry. They have decent armor and are shielded with a missile block chance of 40%, only 50 morale which isn't the best for a frontline unit. Average speed, good melee attack, high melee defense of 40, 90 damage with bonus versus large, this unit has an ability called To The Last, which is a constant buff that gives them 12 melee attack and melee defense once the unit's health drops below 50%. This is a very useful ability, giving them much higher staying power once they are below 50% health. You will use this unit as your front line once you get access to them. The Cory Knights. These are medium weight axe and shield infantry, fairly low armor, slightly higher morale than the Oathsworn. Average speed, high melee attack of 48, good melee defense of 31, damage of 80 with good armor piercing values, decent charge bonus. This unit has the same ability to the last, but they have another ability called Inspire to the last, which gives the same bonuses of the previous ability to the last to an ally unit, but can only be given to the unit if they have less than 50% health. This is extremely useful ability because you can target the portions of your front line that are taking the most damage and bolster them by only using this ability. This unit should be mixed in with your front line units and keep them on the flanks if possible. The Stigenors. These are lightweight two-handed spear infantry, lightly armored, fairly low morale, high speed, extremely high melee attack of 50, average melee defense of 28, 66 damage with bonus versus large, high charge bonus, this unit has improved bonuses when flanking enemy units and the toggle ability spread and charge. You should use these for bolstering your front lines or flanking the enemy front line units. Make sure to activate the spread and charge ability before they charge in and then deactivate it once they have finished the charge. The Labrys Infantry. These are lightweight two-handed axe infantry, decent morale and armor, extreme high speed, high melee attack, slightly lower than average melee defense, 80 damage with good armor piercing values, high charge bonus of 40, they have increased combat bonuses when fighting in the woods, they have an ability called Fierce Resolve which is a constant buff that gives 8 weapon damage, 12 melee attack, 8 charge bonus, and immunity to psychology. 
This passive buff is active as long as the unit's morale stays above 50%. This will be your higher tier armor piercing option to the Stygianors. Use these in the same way as the Stygianors and try to focus on using them more for bolstering your front lines. Last of the melee infantry, we have the Daughters of Ares. These are a medium weight two-handed axe infantry. Fairly low armor, decent morale, high speed, high melee attack of 63, high melee defense of 44, huge damage of 125 with bonus versus spear units, and good armor piercing values. High charge bonus of 44, they cause fear, have improved bonuses when flanking enemy units, and have a passive ability called Life of Bronze, which is a constant buff of plus 15% weapon damage as long as the unit has killed less than 200 enemies. This unit should be utilized mainly for flanking the enemy front lines due to their extremely high melee attack damage and causing fear they will route the enemy front line very quickly. First of the ranged infantry are the stone slingers. These are lightweight slinger infantry. They are extremely lightly armored, low morale, high speed, low melee combat stats, but that's to be expected. 22 ammunition, 160 range, 19 missile damage. They do have force fighter, but they only gain melee combat stats, not ranged. Use these for firing into enemy missile infantry or moving them around to fire at the flanks of the enemy front lines. Skirmishers, these are lightweight javelin infantry, lightly armored and shielded with a missile block chance of 35%, low morale, high speed, decent melee combat stats, 11 ammunition, 90 range, 33 missile damage with good army piercing value. They have a passive ability called Relentless, which gives them immunity to psychology and they do not suffer morale penalties when the hero dies, and they can also rally after routing more often. Hide these units in the woods to give them the opportunity to come out and fire at the flanks of enemy frontline units. Toxairs. These are a lightweight bow infantry, lightly armored, but slightly more armor than the previous two ranged units. Even lower morale, high speed, 20 ammunition, 165 range, 21 missile damage. They also have a ability called Relentless, and a unique ability called Volley, which allows them to fire volleys of arrows into a specific area. I have not found this ability useful, but it may be bugged, I'm not sure. This unit can be used for firing into enemy missile infantry or firing at routing enemies. Try to leave the flanking to the javelin units. Shielded Stone Slingers. These are a lightweight slinger infantry, lightly armored and shielded with a missile block chance of 40%, decent morale, Decent melee combat stats, 22 ammunition, huge range of 180, high missile damage of 38. If you have access to these guys, you can basically replace the spots of the Toxairs. They are practically better in every way. Huntresses. These are lightweight javelin infantry, fairly low armor, and shielded with a missile block chance of 40%. Decent morale, high speed, average melee combat stats so they can hold their own if caught out of place. 13 ammunition, 90 range. 34 missile damage with good armor piercing values. Use these guys in the same way as the skirmishers, hide them on the sides of the battlefields, and bring them out to fire at the enemy front line's backs. The Miscuras Chosen. These are a lightweight javelin infantry, lightly armored and shielded with a missile block chance of 40%, good morale, high speed, high melee combat stats for a ranged unit, 16 ammunition, 90 range, huge missile damage of 40 with good armor piercing values. They also reduce the morale of their missile targets by 10, which makes this unit even scarier. Make sure to utilize these in the same way as the Huntresses. They will route their targets very quickly. Now we are moving on to the cavalry portion of the roster, first being the Horsewomen. These are medium weight spear and shield cavalry, fairly low armor, shielded with a missile block chance of 40%, good morale, extremely high speed, 45 melee attack, 32 melee defense, 100 damage, charge bonus of 46. This unit's speed will be reduced by 30% if their health gets below 50%. They also have a 15% increase in weapon damage until they have killed more than 200 enemies. Utilize this unit for chasing down enemy missile infantry. Once they are dealt with, you can cycle charge them into the enemy front line's backs or chase down routing units. Anai Reese. These are lightweight axe cavalry. They have fairly low armor, high morale, extremely high speed, extremely high melee attack of 55, 35 melee defense, 106 damage with good armor piercing values, 43 charge bonus. They have Fierce Resolve giving them 8 weapon damage, 12 melee attack, 8 charge bonus, and immunity to psychology as long as their morale is above 50%. They also have Eager for Blood which gives plus 10 morale and 
plus 8 melee attack, but it will be disabled if they are, are routing ally units nearby. Due to their good armor piercing damage, you should prioritize this unit for cycle charging the flanks of the enemy front lines. Hippo McCoy. These are heavyweight spear and shield cavalry, decent armor and shielded with a missile block chance of 60%. High morale, high speed, 44 melee attack, 50 melee defense, 110 damage with bonus versus large, swordsman and axeman. Decent charge bonus of 25. They have Fierce Resolve, Relentless, and Life of Bronze. This unit should be utilized for charging into the flanks of the enemy front lines and leaving them in prolonged combat. Furies. These are lightweight spear and shield cavalry, decently armored, and shielded with a missile block chance of only 20%. High morale, extremely high speed, huge melee attack of 60, 45 melee defense, 97 damage with bonus versus large and heroes. High charge bonus of 58. They cause terror, have improved bonuses when flanking, and eager for blood. This unit should be utilized for psychocharging the enemy frontline engagement. Chariot Javelins, a medium weight javelin chariot unit with good armor and shielded with a missile block chance of 35%, decent morale, high speed, decent melee combat stats, 50 ammunition, 110 range, 14 missile damage with good armor piercing values. They can fire while moving and fire in all directions, turn on skirmish mode and send them after the frontline units before they clash with yours. Then you can bring them around to fire at their backs. Mounted Skirmishers, a lightweight javelin cavalry, lightly armored, decent morale, high speed, good melee attack, 18 ammunition, 90 range, 33 missile damage with good armor piercing values. Utilize these in the same way as the chariot javelins. Mounted Huntresses, a lightweight javelin cavalry, lightly armored, good morale, high speed, high melee attack, 18 ammunition, 90 range, 34 missile damage with good armor piercing values. Their missiles also reduce the morale of their targets by 10. These will be used for harassing the enemy front lines until they clash with yours. Then you can move them around to fire at their flanks. Now we'll be looking into an early slash mid game army composition. This army composition should be able to overwhelm many armies you encounter, but this is in no way the best or most optimized army. We'll have three oath sworn, two quarry knights, one Amazon charger, two stigenors, one labrys infantry, one Skirmisher, three Shielded Stone Slingers, two Horsewomen, two Anarites, and two Mounted Skirmishers. So now we're going to look at how we want to form up our army on the battlefield. So we're going to want to have our three Oath Sworns in the center of our frontline formation with the two Cory Knights on the flanks. Three Shielded Stone Slingers will be behind the front line. One Labrys Infantry will be in reserve. These will be used to bolster the front lines. Also, you need to make sure you keep an eye out for what portions of this front line are going to be taking the most damage. Whichever one t takes the most damage and hits below 50% health first, you'll use one of your Inspire abilities on them, and then you have one more to use on the next one. This will help you out a lot with holding your front line as you, we know that the Amazons don't have much staying power. So 56 morale, 35 armor, 31 melee defense. Same with these, these are pretty low as well. So you'll need to utilize the Inspire ability to the best you can. We'll have one Stigenor and one Amazon Charger on the flank. We can either use these to bolster the front lines if needed, but really we want to use these guys for flanking. And we can also use them to intercept flanking units. Another Stigenor on the right flank, just ready to intercept anything, or we can move them around to flank. Then we have two horsewomen in the woods hidden with a unit of skirmishers. Horsewomen, these are very fast units, they should be used to be brought around to take out the missile infantry. Try to wait until the front lines clash before these units are brought out of the woods. And then we have our Anarites. These will be your more hard hitting units, hard hitting horse units. So these will be brought around once the front lines clash, bring them around, charge them straight into their flanks and leave them in prolonged combat because they do have pretty high melee attack. 
55 melee attack, 106 damage. This is very good melee combat stats. And then we have the mounted skirmishers. These will be used to sort of just harass the enemy as they're coming to you. You can also use these units to lure them to you. So if we wanted to utilize the forest, where is the the forest fighter ability, we could use we could set up these formations in the woods instead and we use the mounted skirmishers to lure them to the woods so we can get the bonus for fighting in the woods. And we just have our hero. Hero will be in the center of the front line to just provide the morale bonus. As you can see, the blue circle, that'll be providing a morale bonus most of the time. Sometimes a melee combat stats bonus as well, but you'll have to see on the campaign map. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video and found it informative for your Penthesilea campaign. Make sure to check out my other guides on the other faction units, which can be found in the link at the end of this video. I will be covering the Amazon roster and then I will be moving on to the Warhammer 2 factions. Also make sure you drop a like, hit that subscribe button to get updates whenever we post more Total War guides.